Thank you very much. Uh, this is the last uh, talk, so I'm going to try to be brief. Uh, and uh, um, I will start with this image. This is uh, uh, what came up to mind a few years ago when uh, uh, I was thinking about extracting insights from a video. So it's like it's a garage, it's full of mess. I don't know where to start. It's messy. And the most part of people do this. They just shut the, uh, the door and say, forget about it. I don't want to do it. Um, it's a pity because there are actually a lot of opportunities uh, down there in the market to create value for your customers. If you open the garage door, Door and you start uh, dealing with that, those messy problems. Uh, I'm going to give you a couple of examples now of uh, uh, applications that leverage uh, video as a source of unique insights. Here we are talking about uh, civil um, avionics. So you have on the left uh, video with the moving parts uh, and uh, uh, labels and uh, rectangles. So what's going on here? Well, uh, there is an aircraft uh, that uh, is uh, refueling and onboarding uh, uh, passengers, and uh, the computer vision is uh, essentially detecting uh, moving parts and moving objects and events. On the right hand side, and by the way, this is a technology and product uh, brought to market by a company called Asaya, um, this uh, part on the left is uh, uh, the reconstruction of the whole uh, workflow. And uh, in this case, this is a very great example uh, where essentially deriving insights uh, in this situation, it's very, very easy because everything is already uh, automated. Second example, this is uh, marketing, this is digital marketing. Uh, as you can imagine, digital marketing now is primarily video. Uh, what you want to do if you're a marketer is to uh, essentially spend the money on the ads that drive engagement. Again, another company in the US this time, this company is called Afinia. Uh, what they do essentially is to put respondents, uh, so the lady on, uh, um, on, uh, uh, on my right is watching the video and obviously is reacting to the video ad that is displayed there. Um, and uh, the computer vision algorithm is uh, trying to predict what is uh, the engagement level, which is a score between 0 and 100. Um, again, another brilliant example on how you can uh, create value by looking at images, moving pixels, and uh, uh, deriving insight from it. Last example, this is, a, um, this is an example driven, uh, drawn from Beautify, live logging. Uh, very popular, increasingly popular. Uh, you want to have a more healthy lifestyle. Why not to look at um, what you're doing on a daily basis with a, an IoT device? In this case, it's a body camera that re records things that happen in front of you. So is your um, lifestyle healthy or not? Depends on what you're doing, right? So in this case, there are things going on. So how can we make sense of all this data? Now, uh, the interesting thing is that uh, it is not actually as messy as it seems. Uh, there is a number of uh, steps we always go through uh, to essentially um, take uh, video as a raw source of information and uh, come up with insights that are driving value for your clients. And these are the, the four steps that can, you can see here. Setup phase, low-level feature extraction, high-level feature extraction, and then data analysis. What I'm not going to talk to you about in this um, conversation today is the last step, the data analysis one, because you know, you're all expert on this, so we don't, we don't need to go through this. But I want to bring you to a point where the data analysis is pretty straightforward, because all the rest, um, which is actually the 80% of the work, is already done. So let's jump straight into it, and uh, let's have a look at the first, um, uh, the first section, which is the setup. So how do you, how do you set up? your uh, computer vision pipeline uh, to uh, commence and start your project. Now, first of all, uh, as uh, many of you uh, are already aware of, uh, when you're doing a data science project, uh, the first thing that you do is to focus on the business objective of your client. So what, is, what about an airport? Well, it's all about delays, right? You want to minimize the delay by essentially understanding uh, what is going on with my video, by the way. 
So good now. So you want to understand uh, what are the operations that are more time consuming and the ones that are uh, creating more problems. The second example is about engagement. We want to maximize the engagement uh, of uh, our consumers. And uh, uh, we do this by essentially look at, the, um, uh, look at the ads that are most engaging. Final example, at the lifestyle, we look at activities. Quickly, um, here the recommendation is very very simple. You, not only you have to look at the business problem uh, of your client, but you also want to m measure uh, signals that are uh, related to that business problem. Um, if you want to do that, uh, actually we have on our website www.beautify.co slash tools a set of, uh, um, a set of uh, templates, a set of tools that are enable you essentially to evaluate what is the use case, uh, flesh out what are the alternatives when it comes to data, and uh, it's, it's all there, it's easy, it's free, so please feel free to uh, download and use it. Um, now, we were talking about uh, images and videos, and they are so complicated to process because they are intrinsically redundant, they are uh, very difficult to manipulate. But what if we were able to create uh, an intermediate intermediate representation that simplifies greatly, greatly this signal and kind of compacts it? Uh, now, the first recommendation here is to really focus and identify uh, the visual cues and maybe also the audio cues if you want to go through the uh, audio analysis route that essentially qualify the objective function that we saw before. Let me give you an example. If you are <coughs> in the airline business, uh, obviously uh, you want to detect those moving parts so that you can see here uh, highlighted in green. I'm not an expert in this field, but the, all these moving parts like uh, uh, doors, uh, like uh, cargo um, uh, containers, uh, they can actually pretty easily detect uh, detected in, uh, in videos. What about faces? Well, with faces, uh, you know, we, we are all expert about faces, so uh, the important parts and the important visual cues are certainly the eyes, uh, the uh, subtle movements of uh, the, um, uh, the um, 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 uh, facial muscles and the lips. When it comes to a complex, complex uh, scene like this one, well, in this case, we can separate in four different categories uh, the visual attributes that will uh, um, do a good job in qualifying who is in the picture, when uh, the, this event is taking place, uh, what is in the picture, what is the activity, and where the activity is taking place. So here again, I just gave you an example of what are the things that you should look at. Okay, and the final objective is to come up with a data structure. Once you have a data structure um, like this one, uh, you are in business, okay? Uh, because you have a framework, uh, you have the ability to pretty much uh, see mapped out what are the elements that your machine learning or your computer vision algorithm needs to detect to do a good job. Um, Unfortunately, this is just the beginning of the, the story, because once you have the data structure, uh, our recommendation is always to iterate and try to simplify it to uh, max. And here, Occam Razor is uh, 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 the obvious choice, no more and no less than uh, uh, what you need to do a good job in describing uh, the events that you want to detect. Again, all this is not rocket science. It's just a simple common sense. Um, when it comes a little bit more technical is at this point in the pipeline, uh, when you want to design low-level feature, features that take this data structure and uh, uh, essentially find uh, or fill this data structure um, in uh, your pipeline. So how does it work? Well, uh, it all starts with data. Um, and uh, here we are not very uh, different uh, in the sense that even when we are talking about computer vision, uh, you have to find a data set that approximates well your problem. Uh, we said before that we have a data structure now. Uh, we want to find uh, a 
good data set that approximates your problem. And uh, there is this brilliant website, which is called uh, visualdata.io. I strongly recommend you to have a look at it, because what you can do with this is you can select a topic, as you can see there, uh, for instance, uh, video classification. And uh, uh, you know, on this website, you find an awful lot of data sets uh, that are already publicly available. Uh, what is the advantage for you? Well, if you don't have data yet from your client, you can start by using uh, this data. Second advantage is that you have the labels. And third advantage is that in most part of the cases, all these data sets already come with a baseline and already uh, come with uh, uh, some uh, uh, source code that you can use to do some early experimentation. Now, um, let's talk about the... Um, the, the thing that is, um, for me, more interesting, which is uh, how to, now that you have the data, data set, now that you have the data structure, how can you um, uh, essentially uh, train a machine learning algorithm to take videos in that data set you selected and extract meaningful signals? Well, um, as you probably have heard uh, in many, many other talks, uh, the deep learning uh, uh, revolution has uh, um, spread it in every single field of artificial intelligence, and uh, uh, video recognition is uh, not an exception. Um, this is uh, the state-of-the-art algorithm that is called YOLO. Uh, the acronym stands for You Only Look Once, and you will understand in a minute why. It's really cool. Uh, but, you know, I strongly recommend whoever uh, wants to uh, play with uh, video recognition to use this. Uh, because it's an algorithm that is open source, it's uh, super fast, and uh, by the way, it is um, very, very performing, like state-of-the-art performance. Uh, so let me give you the intuition behind uh, YOLO. Um, let's say that you have an image. Let's take a very simple example. We're not um, talking about videos, we're talking about images within videos. Uh, you chop the, vi the image into um, into squares like uh, this one that you can see, this one that you can see here, and then uh, what you're saying is uh, the following: I want uh, to look at each individual um, um, rectangle or square, and I want to detect objects uh, within uh, that square or within adjacent squares. So YOLO, what it does for you is to create this intermediate representation where you have all these. Um, all these big rectangles, big and small, that are associated, associated to each uh, uh, square. Now, not only YOLO does a great job in detecting objects, as you can see here, or at least making a hypothesis about uh, potential objects, but it also classifies them. Um, and this is the output that you get when you combine the two. So, uh, for instance, uh, the color yellow, I think, is... Uh, um, corresponding uh, to dog objects, uh, then there is uh, the red that corresponds to bicycle, and so on. Okay? Now, this is very messy. Obviously, this is not what we're going to get at the end. Uh, what we need to do, what YOLO does is uh, to vote for uh, the uh, rectangles or the category that are um, uh, most likely to be representative of the objects. And in that case, what, they do, what you do is uh, apply a very simple voting technique like uh, NMS, uh, um, non-maximum suppress uh, algorithm to just promote the uh, good ones. At the end of the day, you split your, um, your um, uh, image in regions, and finally, you get um, neat detections. Now, um, when you're running YOLO, uh, you have essentially a pre-trained off-the-shelf shelf deep neural network that can really be effective in uh, um, distilling uh, all that information and redundancy into a signal that is usable. So this is uh, an, another recommendation. Please experiment with these, data, with these uh, tools because uh, they, are, they are incredibly easy to use and effective. Uh, but uh, when you are uh, successful in, doing, uh, in, in running YOLO, you are left with uh, an output like this one. So a video with a lot of things going on, a lot of uh, um, detection uh, results. Uh, it can be very, very messy. At the end of the day, you get a JSON. All, all the JSON is timestamped. But still, it's really, really hard to think that you can go to a client, show to the client this output, and convince them to pay you for insights. There, it's, we're not there yet. Okay, So we need something that connects this layer 
um, which uh, uh, we call a low level feature layer to an higher level um, uh, layer. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, uh, when, it when it comes to higher level features, uh, we will have to train a new classifier um, using uh, now these features. Now, bear in mind that in this case, uh, the uh, level of abstraction of this feature is much higher because we are now looking at uh, objects or pieces of objects. Uh, we put them in a feature vector, uh, which we call x hat, uh, and we want to instead get those signals on the left, uh, which are um, things like, for instance, healthy, neutral, or unhealthy, if we're looking at body camera uh, video sequences, if we're looking at uh, avionic sequences, it, they will be different. But it's the same principle, right? So you have uh, uh, low-level features, and then you want to abstract and get higher-level features. So how do you do that? You train a very simple linear classifier, which means that um, you're learning uh, the weights, and, uh, and then it's a dot product. OK, uh, it's a dot product. Uh, each frame uh, gets a classification result. In this case, it's unhealthy, but it could be any other, any other class. Uh, the gist of the story is that, OK, you have a sequence of um, frames, and this sequence of frames gets split into three different parts. Uh, one part, which is, uh, uh, which is uh, uh, corresponding to the first category, unhealthy, the second part, uh, which is uh, corresponding to the category healthy, or the third part, which is uh, the neutral. Now, you're in business, uh, and you're in business because you have now two things. You have the segmentation of uh, your sequence, you have uh, quantitative data, because essentially it's a time series, which is annotated, and you can extract two types of uh, insights quantitative insights and qualitative insights. Now, let's wrap up. Um, and uh, what I would like to share is um, a summary of uh, uh, the um, uh, lesson learned that we uh, have uh, uh, incrementally learned thanks to a lot of clients in this field. So first of all, focus on the most burning uh, uh, business problem that you are solving. Secondly, uh, try to design uh, uh, your insights even before starting, because as you have seen, uh, the pipeline uh, is quite complicated. So you don't want to get to the end uh, before you do this, uh, uh, this designing process and discover uh, uh, interesting things at the end. And then more importantly, uh, really try to uh, design your data model early at the, mm, at the start of the project. Uh, for uh, uh, when, when it comes to the computer vision part, um, I think it's very, very key to reuse as much as possible things that are already there. Uh, we talked about YOLO. It's not the only alternative. There are other uh, deep learning frameworks that can be uh, used and can be applied in a very straightforward manner, even if you're not a computer vision expert. Uh, last but not least, uh, uh, try to incrementally, uh, incrementally build your pipeline uh, from low-level feature to high-level features uh, so that uh, you can really uh, extract the most value for your clients. This is all. Uh, thank you very much. Sorry about the uh, problems with the screen. Uh, if there are questions or comments, I'd be happy to address them. Thank you. All right.